And we don't have a biodiesel person here today. I, I'm not quite sure where he's at, he's not here. So Rich, um, who's been in this industry for quite some time, is going to buy an answer for biodiesel on the question. Yeah, I'm old. Uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been in the energy business since 70, 75. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll gladly talk about biodiesel. Um, are competitive. Now, we're not, they're, not, they're not really competitive. Uh, our position, our biodiesel, like you said, is making more, uh, mostly soybean oil in the United States. You take the oil and you make uh, a diesel substitute. Uh, you then can blend that with, with uh, petroleum diesel. Um, you can blend any amount up to about 20%. Over 20%, you start violating warranties in the engine. Our position is that if you have to use diesel, blend it with biodiesel. Uh, if you don't have to use diesel, obviously it's natural gas, that's what we want. But, um, but if you have to use diesel, blend it with biodiesel. Biodiesel uh, historically reduced particulate matter and um, greenhouse gases. The, the new particulate matter regulations are so stringent. The 2007, I mean, they cut about 90%. There's really no data, but I can't believe that biodiesel would reduce it. It's, it, it's already just a tiny. Um, NOx, it actually increases NOx a little, but it, it does a significant, uh, the, uh, significantly good job in reducing greenhouse gases, and because the soybean is, soybeans are made here, uh, it reduces our dependence on foreign oil. So, uh, you know, it's got, it, just like all of us, it's got some good things, and it's got some, some not good things. Okay, uh, why don't we go right here? In regards to that, what about um, the artificially produced stuff we're talking about now? So you're looking for biodiesel? Is that what you're yeah, asking? Or anything. Okay. Well, switchgrass, switchgrass is really used for ethanol okay. production. Uh, because you have two things. You have starch and you have oil. If you have starch, you can convert that to sugar and then make ethanol out of it. Um, it's better to start with sugar. If you have sugar directly, like sugar cane, uh, if you start with that, it's easier to make things. It's more efficient. Uh, uh, if you have oil, then you, you can go to, to biodiesel. Um, yeah. Algae, great promise. All right, there are two things. Things that are here today and work today, and things that are over the horizon that may come to market, may be cost effective, may reduce a bunch of things, we don't know. Our position is, let's invest like crazy in R&D for those things. But let's not wait around for those things to come to market, because when they get here, they may not be the answer. Um, Algae potentially is fantastic. I mean, it could be the greatest source, but we don't know. Um, you know, it's, we don't know. And do you have something you want to do? Yeah. I, I will say that uh, you know, when you make, as, as, as was mentioned here, when you make ethanol, you take the starch out. The fiber, fat, and protein of all the corn goes back into the livestock feed generally. But what some plants have started doing is separating the oil from that and actually have been making the corn oil selling a, a, what's called corn crude to, to biodiesel plants to make into uh, biodiesel. So there's more, more of the, uh, it probably a, seems like a dirty word, but more biorefining going on in an ethanol plant than there was before. It used to be ethanol and distiller's grain. And the distiller's grain would go feed dairy cattle and other cattle, and the ethanol would go into cars. Now there's that they found that the protein and the fiber are still important, and so they still sell those as animal feed but they can take the fat, which is the oil, and sell that to, an, to a, a, a soybean or a, a biodiesel plant. And so there's more of them that are taking that piece out and, uh, and turning it into uh, diesel. And some of them, too, that are using the stalks and some of the other parts of the plants to turn into a, a syngas to power their plants, too. And that's where some of these other efficiencies are coming from that they'll use to get those EPA numbers, depending on what the, the rules end up being. Okay, well, we need to, hold on. Did you have something? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and let me. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to add something about biodiesel. There's, you can also make biodiesel from waste grease. It's called fats, oil, and grease, or fog. And the EPA is currently working on a lot of projects right now for capacity building to get that waste grease um, from hotels, restaurants, and actually residences. So when you wash your dish and it has oil in it because you cooked in it and it goes down the drain, 
is the sewage system, it actually plugs up the sewage system. And in LA, for example, it costs about $60 million a year to unclog the sanitation lines. 70, actually, 70% of all sanitary sewer overflows are caused from grease in the sewer system. That's nationwide. 70%. That's, that's a large percentage. So we're really looking at using waste grease um, to do that. And there's a lot of pilot projects being done. And uh, as far as energy efficiency, it's about four times more efficient is what they're looking at than making it from a virgin feedstock. Um, and the United States has, let me get my fact right, um, it is three billion gallons of waste fog um, every year. And if you don't really know what that is, that's if tanker trucks were filled with waste grease, they could go all the way from San Francisco to New York and back. Um, and that's how much per year is created. So this is also another feedstock that could be used for biodiesel and would also uh, help with the sanitation and wastewater issues at the same time. Okay. When, you, when she mentioned that the Amos Gallus project, actually EPA was a part of a project that we did in, in Amos Gallus. Um, on right at the Mexican border with waste grease and teaching them how to how to make biodiesel and actually produce their own biodiesel in Mexico. So of that three billion, how many gallons of biodiesel can you make? Of the three billion of oil, how much biodiesel? It's, it's ninety percent efficient. Ninety percent efficient. So um, it's ninety. To put that in perspective, we use fifty billion gallons of diesel. So three billion, you know, that, that's great. I mean, that's six percent. And like I said, there's no silver bullet answer. You know, you get 6% here, you get 6% here, 10%, and it adds up to quite a bit. But how do you get the Oh, very easily. Here in Tucson, we do it very easily. And, and we have grease drop-off locations all over Tucson, and we have a company called Grease Cycle that actually picks up the grease, makes biodiesel with it. Now, they're not selling that biodiesel retail yet. I say yet because they're hoping to in the near future. But they're making biodiesel to use in their own trucks, and they own a, an environmental company. And I mean, it's it's still keeping it out of the sewer system, which is helping your tax dollars not pay to clean that sewer system. So I mean, it, it's it's very easy to do. Let me just make two points on that. Um, the oil companies are looking, the refiners are looking at uh, a process called renewable diesel, different than biodiesel. Renewable diesel is when you take vegetable oil, whatever it is, uh, waste oil, whatever. And you put it right into the refining process. Um, and then what comes out is diesel. But it, it's part of the feedstock has been a renewable product. Um, no, there, there's a couple of projects now that are, they're talking about doing it. I don't know how far they are. Uh, the, the proposed benefit of that is that with, with biodiesel, you've got to blend it and you've got to put surfactants in it and other things to keep it blended. But with renewable diesel, you don't. Uh, it just it's just part of the, the process. The second point is, any organic waste, or any, any organic product, like switchgrass or corn, uh, you can make a, a liquid fuel out of it, but you can also make biomethane out of it. In Europe, in Germany, they're making biomethane from corn. Uh, they're making it, in, in Sweden, they're making it from trees, from, from fallen trees. Uh, so, you know, th there's three biofuels. There's, there's biodiesel, there's biomethane, uh, bioethanol, and biomethane. And, Different technologies and different situations lend itself to uh, an advance from one to the other. Like, like in, in, in Germany, they said they get four times the amount of energy per acre or per, per hectare. Okay, I think we had another question. Hold, hold on, just, let's go back here, and then we're going to go over here. So, um, back in the back. No, it was more of a statement. You got to be very loud. We can't hear you. More of a statement to the. Fifty cents. To show you that what we have is a farm policy, not an energy policy. If you took virgin products uh, and you made biodiesel, you got a dollar gallon credit. If you made you made it from waste, it was fifty cents. Yeah. Huh? Uh, so they have changed it. Uh, I, I can check into that too. Okay, I think we have a question.